know, if you've watched the show before, you know these are colors I didn't, you know, I'm not missing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. You ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with shadows on the wall and doing the little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Well, this is part three of This Golfer Has Soul, and I'll bet you're saying, woohoo, we're ready to be done with the golfer. Well, we've just had a really good time working on various aspects of her, the background and her body. Today, we're going to put everything together. And uh, the model was out at uh, Ridgemark Country Club in Hollister. And uh, this girl was great because she posed in, in a, a lot of different, well, she played golf and, and I took pictures and it was great. So she's really been a good sport through the whole thing. You'll notice that from the last, <laughs> last time we were here, her jacket was more of a green blue and uh, <laughs> we just didn't have enough red. So I, I definitely changed, you know, between the last time you saw it and this time I changed her jacket to red and uh, I really like the fact it makes her pop more, it really makes her come forward. So everything about her is warm and the background is cool. I really think this is great that you can see it at this stage because I'm gonna do some glazing and normally it's too wet to do some glazing. So we're gonna, I'm gonna grab some Indian yellow and lots of medium. And we'll start glazing some warmth back there. So I'm going to start in the lighter areas. I'm going to use a lot of medium. It's the consistency of ink. Oh, this is wonderful. So it's really not changing the color, but it's brightening it up quite a bit. Now you can use a bigger brush and get less pronounced brush strokes, but I like all the, uh, I like the busyness of the, the extra brush strokes, so I'm leaving it in. This is also, this, I'm going to put yellow at the top, we'll use red on the bottom, and this is going to make this whole thing come alive. It's a little dull right now, and I don't care if it's the background, I don't want it dull. So this is very little paint, mostly medium, but also this pigment, Indian yellow, is very transparent, so it really lends itself to doing this. If you do this with some other pigments, for example, ultramarine blue, the, pigment, the nature of the pigment itself is very grainy, and it's not as effective. So you have little sediment pieces that hang out, and that just doesn't look very good. I'm trying to stay away from her hand right now because I really don't want her to have a yellow tint to her skin. Yeah, that's really bringing out. Some of these golds had just disappeared when it dried. And that was really pretty and I wanted to bring that back. Now this started off being a fall scene. If you've been watching this, this has been a three month show. and. Uh, but you know what? It's changed. It's, it's, it's uh, close to winter, and the palette has changed. So it's more of a red and green thing rather than the fall colors. That's OK. Now I'm staying out of her hair. Normally, I'd go right over the top of her hair. Why am I staying away from her hair right now? Because it's wet, and you can't glaze over the wet. 
you'll just make a mess. Glazing is done over a dry surface. Okay, I'm putting more pigment here, and by the time I get there, I will have less on my brush. So I don't want it as pronounced. See, it really makes these yellows pop, like there's more going on back there. Right now, in our part of the country, these, there's some ginkgo trees that are blooming. They're absolutely gorgeous, and they're this bright yellow color. I have to paint those. And I know I've been talking about cows for months. I finally started a cow, so January, we're going to do California cows. They will be happy. Maybe a bull, but either way, it'll be bovine. Okay, so I, I was tempted to, uh, to do red on the bottom and bring that up. I think I'll do. I think I will. It's like, shall I or shall I leave it alone or no? But, uh, yeah, I'm going to start with some red, and we'll just do it, because most people would be afraid to put red over green, and it's really okay. So let me grab, now this Perlin Scarlet is also transparent, not like a cad red light that's opaque, so that's good for glazing as well. Although if you use enough medium, you can, you can pretty much glaze with anything. Now this is a bright red, but it doesn't read that way when you put it down here over what's there. But it does add some more life. I'm just going to throw a little bit in. And then what I'm going to do is not use any more pigment. I'm just taking some of the medium. And I'm going to bring it up to the yellow. So this is really making this section start to pop. I don't like boring. So what did I do that's different since the last time? I really um, worked on her jacket, changed the color. That was an entire session. And if you watch the last show, as we, you know, toward the end of the show, all we had was a dark line for her face, and um, I don't think I touched any of that, but basically that was it. And uh, so I did, did put in a little bit of detail, but not a lot. And I'm going to look at this from an angle to see how far I've covered, because you can't always tell depending on the way the light's hitting it. I'm going right over the golf club. I just keep painting right over the club. We're going to put that in at the very end because I don't want to have to paint around it. I don't want to restrict the brush strokes. Okay. This just needs a little bit more medium over here. And we'll start making some skin tones. Okay, so I'm looking at it from the side to see what did I miss, what did, it looks like I did pretty well. There's some stuff over here. I'm just going to throw in some more medium, a little more yellow. All right, I think it's a little sloppy, so I'm actually going to tone it down just a little. If you can make sloppy look good, go for it, but in that case it wasn't. It wasn't happy. Okay. I like that. That really uh, brought out the color. It made it a lot warmer. It's not, not as boring as it was. It was very dull. And I want her to be the center of interest, and I want her to pop, but there's a lot of space here that needs to have something going on. So that's good. I like that. I will definitely need to address this down here, but I'm going to save that for very last. And, and <laughs> 
<laughs> the other thing is, this morning, I, you know, I couldn't wait till I got here to start painting. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was playing with the grass this morning, and it's a little bit tacky. So glazing over the top is just what, exactly what I told you not to do. We wouldn't be able to do that. So um, what I figured is today, you probably care more about making the skin parts look three-dimensional, having that whole thing pop. I'm still going to leave. You can't see your eyes. In the, in the reference photo, you really can't see your eyes. So it's going to be very, um, it's going to be the suggestion of a face as, as opposed, to, opposed to a portrait. But I want that to be three-dimensional. So we're going to work on that mostly today. And if we can get to it, we'll do this. If not, don't worry. We're not doing a... <laughs> We're not doing a four or five, six parter. We're moving on to the cows next time. So, okay, so what do we need to do to get, you know, we've, this part was easy. And you know what, I like first thing in the morning or when I first start a, a painting session, I love to start with glazing because you get to put a lot of energy out there right away and you get something accomplished. And then you go back into the, the thinking part of it. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to mix some dark, medium, and light skin tones which is pretty much what we did last time, only you're going over a second layer. So I'll take some white. It had some red in it, but I'm not worried about it. That was an accident. That was not on purpose. Happy accident. Okay, that's just a little too golden. She has a little more olive complexion. There's a good light. And I'm going to move these guys out of the way because they're, they're bugging me. I will use them later. Oh, I need the room. Okay, so we need a medium. And that will be some cad red light. Ooh, that's a <laughs> that's a little too over the top for skin tone. Even even some of the lipstick I wear, it's a little too over the top. So we'll tone that down a little bit. How am I going to tone that down? I'll throw in a little bit of green. It's opposite on the color wheel. Just I mean, if you can see my knife, I'm just barely touching it. Hardly any. That's all it's going to take. And some white. Okay, and I think what I'm going to do is make a secondary pile. There we go. That's a better light skin tone. I changed my mind on this. I added this to it. There. All right, so now we have a light, a medium that's still a little too loud. Okay, so I need, do need a little more green. Maybe a little blue. That's better. And a little dark. And then we'll work on some of the stuff in between. So let's try some Carbazole Violet, also known as Dioxazine Purple. And a little bit of white. I'm going to steal some of this red mixture, see what happens. Now there are times when I use something <laughs> that's purple on a face. I was painting the cow. <laughs> okay, I was painting the cow in Gilroy, California over the weekend. And, um, and the whole right side of his face, you know, was, I, I just used some really, I, I was just in the mood, and I used some really bright, vibrant purple colors in this, in this lady. <laughs> lady came up and said, are you really going to paint that cow purple? <laughs> and, um, you know, it, actually I wasn't. That was just how I started off. But, um, <laughs> so, but it was fun. And you know what? If you want to use purple on the, the shade side, <laughs> wherever you want to use purple, <laughs> go ahead and do it. So anyway, I, I showed her what I was doing. And um, now I just added red to that. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. 
Anyway, she came out again after lunch, and, um, and she liked the purple. So when you first put some colors down, until you have their neighbors around it, you can't tell whether it's going to work or not. You can't always tell. All right, so these are, uh, they look pretty good here on the uh, palette, as far as a dark, a medium, a light. And I think now, now if I was just starting off and I didn't have anything sketched in all right, that would be great. But I have to consider what's here already. And I need a mid-tone here in the shadow side. And I kind of like some of this blue stuff that's going on here. But I need another mid-range, so I'm going to develop that even further. And let's see with her face. Got to be careful on this little neck shadow, make that not too dark. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to add a little bit, a bit of red to this and make that little offshoot there. So, I'm making a secondary color for each thing. So, those two go together. This one, I think, needs another, maybe a medium in between these two. That didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't look like anything happened there. That was powerful. Okay, so we'll grab some more white. You notice that I didn't try to add that to that, that huge pile because that, that pigment's so powerful. Look out, see, it just takes over. Okay, so now I'm comparing that to this. I still think all this stuff needs a little more red to it, a little reddish tone. That might have been a little overkill. Imagine that. Somebody was talking today about Sammy Hagar, and he has this song called Red. Would, <laughs> would be perfect. Um, I'd have to get his permission, of course. It'd be perfect to use on the show. Okay. So we've got some good tones there. We get a smaller brush. I'm looking for a filbert because people are, are uh, not... They're not geometric shaped, and so when you have brushes that are squared off, that, that doesn't work as well for me. Okay, so if you look, before I get started, if you look at the palette there, you look at it and go, God, I'm not too sure about that as far as being skin tones. Um, I was teaching a class on Monday night, and the way we do it is I'm painting something and then everybody follows along and paints the same thing. And, but I don't restrict their color usage. I said, this is where we're going. You guys pick what you want to get where you're going. And it's really neat because everybody comes up with all these great, great ideas and, and great color. And as long as they're harmonious and they all work together, they can create what we're making here. So, um, so that's it. If you guys look at this and go, I don't think so. <laughs> Well, don't worry about it. Use the colors that you like. Okay, so where am I going to start? I'm going to start with the lights, because those are the areas I tend to tend to um, lose. I'm going to start with this little tip of her nose. That's kind of overkill, but you know what? That's all right. Um, where she have, she has some light right on her knee. That's pretty close to what was there before. We've got that shadow from the golf club, which is a little distracting now, but it'll, it'll make sense later. Maybe not, <laughs> but I'm going to leave it in. Okay. And so those are the big lights. And now we'll, now we'll go for some of the medium tones. Let's see, what about her face? She's got right on her chin. Her chinny chin chin. So I'm just putting a blob there. There's light hitting right under, right above her mouth. Now she had a very serious look on her face, but I'm giving her a grin. She was really deciding what she, how she was going to make this putt. All right, don't worry if you're watching. I will tidy up your face. <laughs> It'll look better. Okay, 
So if you look at it, it looks like she has a milk mustache and she's doing a, a, a <laughs> commercial for, for milk, but um, it, it really will get better. All right, so now I'm going to take some uh, of the lighter tone and blend that in. But first I'm going to wipe my brush. I'll just stick this in my pocket. You know what, that's almost too light, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix something in between with my brush. All right, so let's get rid of our little milk mustache. Oops, right into her. This is almost too tiny for me to paint here. Okay, if there's anybody out there at home that knows the technical term, <laughs> I can't tell you what my father-in-law calls this. I don't think I can say that on TV. But um, I'd love to hear what the technical term is for this area of your that I'm painting right there on her face. So email me if you guys know. Oh, God. That, I don't, okay. I think that might be a call to action. Forget that I said that. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. <laughs> but if you want information <laughs> about this area, then you can email me. Okay. So I'm blending, <laughs> blending this little area here. And I'm going to add some, some of that tone. I still think it's a little too light, so I'm going to wipe some of that off and go a little bit darker. I know it's got to be hard to see this little area. There, that's better. And what will happen is I, you know, I end up going right over her mouth, and so I'll have to fix that. It's just a, you know, give and take. You keep going back and forth until you get it the way you want it. And you'll notice at this stage in the game, I will step back. And um, every time I step back and look at you, I'm also looking in the monitor because that's like looking in a mirror. I can get the distance from the painting. So I will step back a lot and say, eh, is it working, is it not? So any of you guys that have emailed me and said, Shannon, you don't turn around enough? <laughs> That won't be a problem today. And I'm working on that. I forget. I get sucked into the painting. Okay. Let's see, where else is she light? I'm going to stick, while I've got this on my brush, I'm just going to add some of that. Rather than make this really dark, I'm just going to lighten this up here. Sometimes what I think needs to be fixed is not it at all. It's just the adjacent area. And I'm looking at the, you know, I don't know what I was thinking the last time I was painting this, but the shape of her shadow is, is way off, so I will fix that. I have to be at least on the right track because people came to my open studio the other night and they recognized her, so that's good. All right, let's try a little bit darker. Let's see if this is too purple or not. Maybe not. Might work. Okay, so the shadow goes. I'm wondering if, see, I didn't make her, that's, that's it. It's like you keep looking at areas that are Okay, we're double brushing it now. There are other areas that need to be fixed. So I'm going to take a little bit of the white. And maybe correct isn't a bad word. We're going to adjust the drawing. Um, her shirt comes out a little bit here. And that just kind of looks muddy, so I'm, I'm going to grab some more paint, get it thicker. All right, so it comes out here. That's better. And what else does it do? It goes back up there, but it's more of a violet color, but we can we can kind of 
key that in later. There, that's better. Now this shadow will make more sense. Had the wrong shape. All right, so right in here is the real dark. And you know what? When I get to her ear, I'm just, it's just going to be a blob of red. Now with men, you know, I've talked about this before, that their capillaries are really close on their, and their ears are typically redder than most women. But if I just put a little dash of red there, that'll work. You don't have to babble to tell this story. Okay, that's that's good as far as that shape. It needs to come over more. Uh oh, getting sucked in the painting. Sometimes what happens is I'll see something that needs to be corrected, and I'll go in there and I and I see it and I know that that's what needs to be done, and I go in there and do it, and I'll be darned if I don't do the same thing again. It's like your brush just wants to go do the same mistake you made last time, and so sometimes I do need to get the distance from it before I can get it to work. All right, so the major dark is, and then I can just refine this. And this really just needs to come all the way with a little bit lighter tone, all the way over to here, and sh a little bit shorter. So we're adjusting this as we go. Okay, I am. I'm going to grab a little straight purple, just because I like it, and a little red. And that's going to be right under here. Make that a little darker. Right there needs to be a little darker. Let's just be bold and go, go for some straight carbers all violet. Just because you don't expect that right there. Well, that's pretty. Okay. And I'm going to get a clean brush, throwing some red right on her ear. I mean fire engine bright red, even though it's in the shadow. There. That was good. Okay, now I need to lighten up parts of her skin again. So I'll take this light. And fix this shape here. Now this is a little bit wet under here, so I'm actually mixing on the canvas. Okay. And this also is a little bit lighter here. I have to be careful. I don't want it to make, she does not have, she only has one chance, so I need to be careful that, that it stays that way. There's some reflected light there that I want to, I'm putting in by just using this dirty brush here. And when you're really close to it, you just can't see what's going on. So I'm stepping away from it. That's better. That's creating some, some depth. It's great because when you're at home, you can definitely see where, where it's going and if it's working or not. Okay. So let's define our face a little bit more and move on to we get it to a certain point, we'll move on to other areas just so you can see them take shape. That was a little too red there. 
That's okay. All right, I'm adding a little bit of just a little stroke here for it's this little thing here that's defining the shape here that's defining what her mouth is doing. And I have to tone that down just a little. Add a little bit of light here and here. Okay, I don't see this in the picture, but if you were in real life, you'd see it. Oops. That was another oops. I need to clean that up a little for some form. Okay, I just killed that the little poor little, she had that nice little uh, bump there. And I'm blending it away, and I'll reinstate a few things in a minute or two. Toning down her lipstick a little. She's not a bright red lipstick lady. Giving her a little bit of form there. Okay. Now I just have to take a brush and clean that up a little. Totally clean brush. And I'm scrubbing. I'll reinstate the darks. And then we will step away from the face. <laughs> Yeah, that's better. Okay. Let's give her some lips. The darker lip is, or the top lip is usually darker because it's shadowed. Lower, lower lip is usually lighter. At this point, I'm not even looking at the reference photo. I'm just giving her some lips. That's better. Okay, so let's give her some rosy cheeks. And she needs to have something under her nose here to get that separation. I just want the suggestion. I don't, I don't I want to, again, we're not working on a portrait here. All right, so this needs to be a little darker. Put this back in. I do need to put that little light, light blob on her nose again. Okay, that's just a mid mid section now so you get the idea of a face she's not as happy as she was <laughs> so you get the idea of a face but I definitely need to move on to make sure that we get some of this other stuff covered and we will go back now the other good thing about doing that and moving on is you're not I could fudge with that for three or four hours and, um, and I'd be changing the channel too so um, I'm gonna move on to some other areas okay all right, so what about her hands? It doesn't take that much to suggest um, hands. As long as you get the gesture right, you pretty much have it. So what do I see? She's, this was, uh, needs to be cleaned up a little because I went way over the top. So I'll actually take some green. We're going to clean up some of the drawing from last time or the time before. And uh, that's probably a little too bright. So I don't even know what, what was going on there, but I'm cleaning this up. And because it was so light, it's going to need something dark to cover that up. So I will put that in and blend it. I'm ha applying very little pressure. And blend it a little bit. 
with a dry brush so it doesn't look like I did just what exactly what I did and then it just blends in with everything else that's there okay so that was that then we need to put some dark under her where she's close to the club so this is dark And what's it doing down here? Right here, it's pretty dark. And we just need a little bit of uh, separation there. And that's just awkward with her, her finger up there. It looks really weird. But that's exactly what it's doing. It's that, that shape. We'll make that lighter there, but I do want that separation. So you can see I'm not getting a tiny brush and painting in every fingernail. And let's see, this is really light right up here. And this area here is probably one of those where I'm going to have to wait till it dries and put light, real light over the top unless I make it really thick and so that it's consistent with other parts of the painting. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to clean up these shapes here. There's a little green from that, but that just adds interest, so I'm, I'm letting that go. Make this a little bit more rounded. Okay. Yeah, I just want that distance thing for that to work. And then I just have to, to round off the shadow because it's a little harsh. It's amazing how some of these little strokes will help it or hurt it. Okay. All right, that's it for that little part of it. And how light is that? It's not, it needs a little, that's what it is. That shape is wrong. You know, as I go, I'm constantly adjusting my, my drawing. That's starting to make more sense, especially when you look from a distance. See, if you go in the next county, it's looking good. <laughs> okay, so that's a good start there. Then we just need to... Um, her glove le needs a little bit of form, but that's not, uh, that's not skin tone. We're going to finish that off. Let's tidy up her legs a little bit. And on that side is light. And I don't think that's light enough, but we'll, we'll put it down and see. Yeah, I'm going to have to wipe my brush a little bit. This was late afternoon. And uh, that sun was coming from over there on this side. I have to make this shadow of the club not so harsh. And we're just going to add a little interest here. And what is going on under her leg hair that I didn't, e I didn't even paint that in? Got uh, a mid tone here and a mid tone in there. I'm gonna have to put this in and then blend it. I missed it last time. We'll tidy that up. I hope you can see by watching the different segments that, you know, it doesn't, at least the way I paint, it doesn't all happen in one, in one session. 
Now, there are people that can do it in one session. That's just, uh, have, I've not been able to. I'm not an action painter. Okay, so we've got that shadow there, and now we just need to clean up some of the other, um, the, some of the things with her leg that's interesting. I, she has very slender legs. Now, one of the things, the dangers with me painting this here is in making form, I don't want it to make it appear whiter than it is, because they're not that way. Okay, so I need a mid-tone, which is, that was slightly different. Just a little bit darker. That's better. I'm almost glazing over the top of this. And that's going to be less pronounced. And then I'll just have to reinstate those uh, shadows just slightly. Okay, so it's still looking messy at this point, but we'll put in the, uh, the other shadow. And I'm just going straight for the violet and a little bit of red. And then there's some more dark hair. And I want to make sure that this shape is, you know, that's, that's what I did. That shape here is not right. There, that's better. And then just needs to be pretty much a mid-tone right down here. Then we'll put the light over the top and move on to the next leg. There are days when my husband will come in the studio and I've worked on it for three or four hours and he can't see what I did. And um, he can't tell. And, you know, it just, it, sometimes it does go through that, that stage before you get it to where you need to, before it finally starts turning. Okay, so we've got this shape here, and then this part of the leg needs to be a little more defined and blended, and not so harsh. That's better. And then I'm going to move over to the, uh, to the other leg. And, you know, I feel like just throwing some red right over the top, which is what I would do at home if I wasn't worried about how it would come out. So I'm going to do it. Um, I'll just pretend. Oh, that's better. That was just straight red. It's kind of like the difference, I don't know if you play piano or play an instrument, is how you play when, when no, you don't know if anybody's listening. So it's great to do it like that, no matter who's around. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's a good, that's a good start. Now, the... Uh, when you get back from it, if you took away this shadow, which is, which is just very distracting, if you took away the shadow, the form is just perfect. And I think the shadow will make more sense once we do put in the golf club. So I'm going to put in just a rough, just put in the suggestion of that's not enough paint. 
of the club, because that'll help it make sense. But there have been times that I still thought it looked stupid, and I just take it out. So yeah, you can see I'm not worried about making a straight line or anything. I will, um, I will take a straight edge later and clean it up. All right, so there's that, and then I'm just going to tidy up this leg here and just move on, move on to the next one. Okay, so she needs a little more red there. That's great. It's just a little cad red light that helps. Should not be so cold. And that's part of her. Got some nice reflected light, so I'm going to leave that blue that's there. This whole side is dark. I could, you could just glaze. I like to glaze, so let's just try it. it. Might be over the top, but you know, I wouldn't be the first time I did that. Sure won't be the last. Maybe it could be reflecting some red from her jacket that we just don't see. We're pretending. And this is dark under hair. Okay, I'm a little overboard with the pink, so let's move that up. And that needs to be darker there. So when you're right on top of it, it's very abstract. It's when you get away that it makes sense. Okay, I also need to reinstate the white that I, uh, her little socks. I'm just going to throw in a brush stroke here. It'd be cooler on the other side. This was actually warm right in here. God, I missed that. Amazing what you don't see sometimes. Okay, so then she ha if I can just throw in a little white there, only it was too wet. And where else? Right here. Back to her, uh, well, no, I'll have to do something with the glove really quick before I go playing with her face. Because once I get on there, I, I won't, I get stuck. It's kind of like the tiles I did on one painting a long time ago. All right, so I want a little blue, a little violet. I think I need a little more pigment. All right, so this was in shadow. A little more form on the glove. We were in class the other night, and they, uh, you know, it's a three-hour class, and they could not believe, you know, at the end it was, it, it just went by so fast. It really does, you do, really do get lost. Okay, I pretty much glazed over the whole glove because that was too much, and um, and I overdid it. So one of my favorite erasers is a little paper towel. There, that's all it took, and I'll put in some the darks back in. But I'm looking for a clean little brush. I'm grabbing some straight blue, just because we need to have had some variation here. And where is the shadow? It's right there. I'm cleaning up her glove just slightly. None of this is going to be totally rendered. A little same thing on her jacket right here. 
And I also like this blue where it hits the red. That's nice. And the shape of her glove on her, the way, the way her knuckles are, are a little awkward. So I'm just going to try and, um, sometimes things happen and, and you need them in the painting. And you just don't want to draw attention to them. So, so you play them down. I just whacked off one of her, <laughs> I just whacked off one of her fingers. That was an accident. I will, I will. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jody. I'll fix it. <laughs> oh, this may be one of those let it dry pu puppies. I think the glove was better before I started today. All right, so we got some light here, and there's another finger here, another finger there, and that's what it is. I need to put that shape back in. And this is light. I'm just going to be some bold with some of this light. All right, let's fix her face a little. Tidy up the grass. So we're coming into the home stretch here. Uh, she needs a little button here. Her nose. I'm going to get a little blending brush once I put that in. And try not to blend it out again. I'll just leave it. And uh, let's see. Fix her lips a little. Make this a little lighter. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Well, she may not, uh, <laughs> in real life, she may not wear red lipstick, but she is here. Okay. And I need to clean up her complexion because she actually has really nice skin. That's better. Doing her some rosy cheeks. And it's just a very fine blending, blending process. Now there's some dark darks that I need to put in that would help this stuff make sense. But again, I really don't want I really don't want to focus on that. Um, today's been a day of painting all over the painting and and seeing where you need to go. Um, instead of just focusing on one area, it's like, okay, I do this, and then this pops, and then this pops, and then that pops. So what would I do as far as uh, a finishing thing? I'd probably leave the background alone. Let me see if I can play with the grass a little bit, just a little bit. Got a little bit of time. So I throw some straight yellow over there just to see what happens. Um, this is one of those where I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to try it anyway. How wet is it? It's just kind of tacky. I just wanted some extra color. I don't want to do too much of that. Let's get some bright green just because why not? Let's just really go over the top. I'm lifting it up. I mean, if you're going to play and go over the top, you might as well do it. I don't know that that's harmonious with this red that's here, so I need to cool it down a little bit where they meet. Whoops, that was a little too much. That's okay. We'll blend it.
And part of the reason, two reasons why that didn't work. One was it was wet underneath, and the other was that it was just a little too bold for that area. That's, that's a little more interesting. Yeah. That's good. I'm going to keep, keep it cool on the sides and warm so that the warmth is pointing to her. Okay, we got yellow, yellow on the thumb. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Now let's just see what we can do about the, the chin. Just put in a couple little strokes that'll that'll make her look like she's she's actually there. There's this. We'll make her eyes just a little bit darker. A little bit under the chin. A little separation there. Now I'm using a dark color, but I'm just using a light pressure. couple other things to make the separation here. All right, we're, get, we're getting down to the end. Well, maybe I'll just try, <laughs> as I said I wouldn't do it, putting a little bit of light over the top, just a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Um, <laughs> just not enough time to play with that one. All right, so what would I do? Again, the background's great. That's a, that's a great wild thing going on back there. And uh, I would do exactly what I did today over this whole thing. I'd continue to tidy up all the little areas, put in the details. So where there's dark, I'd add another layer of, uh, instead of just one layer of dark, there'd be a medium dark. And wherever there's a medium, everything would have a, a dark medium light within the dark areas, within the medium areas, and within the light areas. So um, I give her a little happy smile, even though she's concentrating. Make her smile a little bit. Um, maybe not too much down there on the grass, but I do need to tie this in together. But probably another three hours at home, <laughs> and she'll be looking good. But until then, um, what we're going to do is, is next time do this huge, probably 36 by 36 painting of a cow face. That would be great. And if you, you know, if you want to take classes in person and you want information about taking classes in person, you can always visit my website at www.shannongrissom.com. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Give your wall some soul. I'm Shannon Grissom.